Joining me now to talk about where we are going with the next set of development goals is Amina Mohammed. She is the Secretary General's Special Advisor on the post-2015 development planning. Thank you for coming by. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you me. here. Yeah. So we're at 2015 now and we're taking a look at going forward. Uh, tell me about the process. You are literally leading this process for the Secretary General. How do you decide what are going to be the development goals for the next 15 years? How does that work? Well, member states decide, mm -hmm. but we, we try to help inform that with the best possible lessons learned and evidence that's available for what we need to do to respond to the challenges that we have today. They're not the challenges of 2000 when we designed the Millennium Development Goals as a different set of challenges. Some are still existing because the MDGs are unfinished business, um, but there are new ones. Um, it's a new narrative that we have to respond to where conflict is a very big issue, inequality is huge, um, young people that don't have jobs, um, the, the lack of access really just to basic services and rights. So we, we are really looking to see um, how to help member states in a universal agenda because this is so much bigger than we had before. One, how do they bring their priorities in? How do we help shape those where we can agree the ambition to a response in a set of goals and targets? And, and that's taken a long time and it's one that we've learned that ownership is key um, from the country level within different stakeholders and their constituencies. Uh, and how to make that a global conversation and bring that into negotiations which are pretty difficult. If you have any questions for Amina, then you can send them in to hashtag WHA68 or hashtag social good. We have one question here. When the blue circle comes up here, it means we have a question from somebody that's watching us online. So the question is, how do we address health equality? The I think inequality issues. Yeah, I mean, the inequality itself um, has different dimensions to it. The policy environment has to be key to that, the coherence of it within what we aspire to globally, but also local result. Um, and then we've really got to see how we put in place the priorities of a country to, for access to everyone and what are the missing pieces to allowing everyone access to basic services, particularly health. But as you know with the SDGs, we also talk about education, we talk about gender, um, we also speak about ending poverty and making sure that um, there is social inclusion on the inequality agenda. Do you find consistencies to the barriers to access? I think across the world there have been. Um, uh, clearly, you know, women are our, our one uh, consistency all the way through um, that we see barriers to that. Um, but I think institutionally, policies themselves are not conducive. Um, they don't look through a gender lens often. Um, and we also see that many vulnerable groups are left behind. And some of the tools available to make that not so should be what is at the fore of the agenda today. So we talk a lot about accountability, strong institutions, the data revolution. Um, if we're leaving no one behind, which is key to this universal uh, agenda, um, what are we doing about the baselines and really trying to disaggregate them, not just by country, within country, across countries, uh, to see you know, where are those that are missing that need to be brought to the fore. I'm curious how the process to develop the next 15 years of goals mm -hmm. has differed from the process to build the goals for the Millennium Development Goals. What have we learned from putting together the MDGs that's going to make the process even better for the SDGs? I think the ownership part of this, the involvement in the process to determine your priorities as a country, as a constituency in civil society, parliamentarians, business, um, vulnerable groups that were not always captured by some of the stakeholder groups. Um, in, in 2000, it really was an acknowledgement that the many different UN platforms had not met the goals they had set. So for instance, on the education for all, the health for all, many goals were left behind and it was sort of, what can we do as the minimum ask to actually put forward an agenda of, of eight goals as it turned out, a Millennium Declaration that says eight, these eight goals must be achieved within 15 years. That was basically done by a lot of experts um, who were committed to this and who had the experience of many decades, but it was done in a closed environment. And so regarded and, and referred to as a prescription. Okay. Coming down to our countries, and I certainly was a part of a very big country that received the MDGs, took us a long time to understand and to own them and to integrate them into our own investment plans. That's a big lesson learned. 
And so in this sense, the, the interaction with governments and with stakeholders right from the beginning, a three-year process, the widest possible, the involvement of young people, especially women, across social media who are informing this gives us ambition. Um, it gives us a sense of can-do because we have to do it. The implications for not are too dire. Um, but, but it also has broadened the need to bring in all aspects. So we don't just talk about the substance. We also talk about the means of implementation and we talk about accountability. I have one last question for you and I'll ask it briefly so we can finish on time. But th there's three major events over the next six months. Uh, we've got the financing for development. We've got the report of the progress of the Millennium Development Goals and we have the Climate Summit. They can look like from afar that they are completely disconnected. But actually they're quite interconnected, aren't they? Very interconnected. Uh, one without the other just won't give us the ambition we need to respond to these huge complexities we have in the world today. Um, the first meeting, which is the means of implementation, really does, in July in Addis Ababa, does try to respond to the 17 goals that we have, the substance of the SDG framework. Um, and, and that is very important because it opens up the resources in a much broader way, brings in technologies and capacities. Uh, so we're going beyond just speaking about what we've done before, unlocking resources that were not otherwise available to the development agenda. These messages and what happens with the ambition have a direct impact on what we do on climate change. Um, and that we have to bend the curve to make it a better world. And, and I think that these are three things that we can do, they're within reach, there's certainly the wherewithal. What we need is not just the political leadership, but we need commitment um, and we need courage of conviction. Amina Mohammed, okay. thank you so much. Welcome. She is leading this work to develop the SDGs for the Secretary General. Uh, really a luxury to have her here uh, with it's us for just a segment. Thank you so much for your Welcome. time. We appreciate thank you, you coming by.